what we really want to do is make meaning out of that. We want to go beyond the did you know question to the why should you care. The folks in this room try to visualize the worst. We have to start with the data and to get it into a very usable format, something that people can really interact with. In hopes of achieving the best, the goal moving people from data to decisions. And so more what we try to do is when you start talking to people and say, well, what is it that you care about? And here are decisions you've made based on the reality that you've known. Well, here are some things that are changing to that reality. Take this computer model of a community near Fort Lauderdale. Watch what happens when a Category 2 hurricane combines with moderate sea level rise. It's one thing to describe severe flooding, it's quite another to see the effects. Because what we're trying to do is get away from people connecting to data to actually connecting to things they care about. And so if they can see their own home, if they can zoom in to see their neighborhood, if they can see a local crop that they are interested for their livelihood, that's where they're going to start. Now, if we can attach data to that through visualizations, then that's kind of the second step of what we're doing. But um, what we really want to do is make meaning out of that. Oh, look at, yeah, right, right over there. So pull that back, back up there. And showing the effects, or making data meaningful, is the goal of the climate scientists, designers, graphic artists, and communicators at the National Environmental Modeling and Analysis Center. It's based at the University of North Carolina at Asheville. Sarah Gibson writes stories to illustrate what is shown in the data and graphic images. I think that using a narrative is more engaging to the community. It's more engaging to people who aren't in the sciences or aren't policymakers, and even to people who are, um, who are making decisions. It, it shows that it has a human element and it has a direct impact on the community. Um, and it catches your attention, it's engaging in a way that is completely different from just looking at a graph. Essentially, NEMAC is an aggregator of massive amounts of data, petabytes of data, and one petabyte is enough information for 58,000 movies. So NEMAC accesses the data from more than 60 federal agencies, covering everything from forest cover to the types of trees growing to urbanization to farming to flood and drought data. But then it takes the data and creates tools to make sense of it, to visualize it and make it usable. It's important to know that NEMAC doesn't store the data it utilizes. Their programs hit the web servers of government agencies. That means that all of the information used in their computer models and visualizations is current. That is, this is the best stuff from NOAA, the best stuff from the government agencies, pulled together and tied to the content that describes the story and how that's used in the story. There's different sides of this. One is making the data accessible so that users can download it. The other one is telling the story with it and helping, helping the data be relevant for the users that are having to make decisions from it. The data can also be layered through the same interface, such as this model for land use planning. It can illustrate the consequences of urbanization, deforestation, and agriculture, as well as ways to minimize the impact of land use decisions. The tool can also illustrate the impact of weather events. And I'm turning on the current drought layer, which is provided by NOAA. If I wanted to look at the legend, I click on this eye and it shows me what these colors mean on the map. Lead There's, science editor yeah. Nina Hall yeah. shows how yeah. drought yeah. forecasts and crop reports can be brought together. Then I also wanted to see, for instance, what is growing where in the country. I turn on the cropland layer, which then pops up here. I could also look at that legend if I want, and it'll show me what all the different colors mean. I can also slide a transparency bar, which will show the drought layer behind the cropland layer. And then I could also zoom in on a particular region of the country and then explore that data and what the drought might be affecting. NEMAC's work is showcased in the U.S. Climate Resilience Toolkit. That's the centerpiece of the federal government's efforts to adapt the nation to climate change. But a changing climate is not NEMAC's sole focus. 
Its work is used by decision makers across the country in state and local governments, as well as private industry, to study land use, agriculture, and urban planning. And if you can then start seeing these changes, you're going to start saying, well, are you willing to start doing something a little bit differently? Because the world around you is changing. So connecting to people's own personal pain points or thresholds is really where you get people to make decisions that most of us really don't like to change until we're forced to change. But if you can give people a little prior warning, so you're not having to change in the face of an emergency or disaster, you're so much better off.